per molar mass is there, the polar compound will have a higher boiling point simply because polar compound will experience dipole-dipole interaction. Okay, so one of the special one of the special type of dipole-dipole interaction is what we call hydrogen bounding. And this is where you need to remember the conditions where hydrogen bounding can occur. Okay, now if you have an atom with a strong or very high electronegativity. Now, these are the only three atoms that we consider with high electronegativity. And that's nitrogen, oxygen, and chlorine. Now, if you have hydrogen, have hydrogen atoms in a molecule, if you have hydrogen atoms, at least one hydrogen atom attached to one of these three atoms, those molecules will exhibit what we call a hydrogen bound. Now, that's the condition. In order for hydrogen bounding to occur, you have to have one of these three. Also, you have to have at least one hydrogen attached directly to these very uh, the, these elements with very high electron activity. Okay, so when we ask you to judge what kind of compound can have hydrogen uh, hydrogen bounding, you look for nitrogen, you look for oxygen, you look for chlorine. But having those atoms is only one condition. The other is that you have to have a hydrogen atom directly attached to those elements with high electron activity. So this is something that you need to remember. Now what happens in, in terms of hydrogen bounding there? Well, very much similar to dipole-dipole interaction. You have a separation of charge, but in this case, one end of the molecule, the negative, in, uh, negative end of the molecule, is actually having a fairly high electron activity exhibiting a stronger attraction if you have a hydrogen attached to it. So in this case, we call it hydrogen bound. Hydrogen bounding occurs only when you have nitrogen, oxygen, chlorine in the molecule. Only when you have at least one hydrogen. You can have more than one hydrogen attached to those electronegative and electro, uh, electro, uh, electro negative elements there. But you can have you can have more than one, but you need to have at least one. Okay, so in this case, we can use hydrogen bounding to explain why ice float in water. Ice is solid water. Solid water has a lower density. Now, the reason for that is because if you look at each of the water molecule, electron, uh, the uh, uh, electro, uh, EPG, electro, uh, electron pair uh, uh, geometry there says there is a lone pair of electron on oxygen, there's a lone pair of electron on oxygen. Okay. Now those lone pair of electrons, electrons bear negative charges. Okay. Those lone pair of electrons can be attracted to the positive end of other water molecules. Now the same thing here happens to these positive ends. Now these positive ends of the water molecule can also be attracted to the negative end of other water molecules. And if you look at this entire structure there, basically you end up with a tetrahedral structure of four water molecules connecting to one water molecule in the center. Very much similar to the methane structure where carbon stays in the center or hydrogen surrounding it. Now, if this happens there, when the temperature is lowered, the hydrogen bound is formed there, you end up with the tetrahedral structure that takes up more space. Density equals to mass over volume. If the volume is increasing, but the density remains the same, well, but, but if the volume is increasing, but the mass is, remains the same, then density decreases. As a result, when ice, when water frees up into ice, the solid water takes up more volume with the same mass. So the density is lower. How much lower compared to water? Well, density for water for, for ice is about 0 0.9, 0 0.997. Very small difference, but that small difference um, is enough to make ice float in water. Now you also hear a, uh, a saying in English there is that when you see the tip of the iceberg, you only see a very small portion of the problem. When you, when you describe a, a problem there is that you just see a tip of iceberg. You only saw a tip, tip of iceberg there. That means 90% of that body of ice is actually submerged in water. Only a very small portion is floating on top there. And that's more, uh, a small portion floating above water is because of the lower density. Okay, so hydrogen bounding, we can use hydrogen bounding to explain the lower density of ice there. I mean, simply because the water molecules takes up more room. When the temperature is lowered, uh, the volume 
is increased. Uh, increasing in volume with the same mass, resulting in a lower density. Okay. Now, another thing that we do want to take a look at is the boiling point change. Now, we say within the same group of elements there, you would see in general, as those elements combine to an identical other type of atom there, the molar mass will be increasing. Okay, the boiling point should be increasing. That is true for group 4A elements, starting with carbon, silicon, germanium, and so on and so forth. And you can see that general trend there. The temperature is increasing. But when you go to group 5, group 6, and group 7, well, that trend still holds, but starting with the second element in each of those groups there. The exceptions are ammonia, hydrogen chloride, and water. Those three compounds have much lower molar mass, but they have much higher boiling point. The reason behind that? Hydrogen bounding. Now, when you have hydrogen bounding there, nitrogen or fluorine or oxygen, you must have one of those three. You mu also must have at least one hydrogen attached directly to those three atoms there. So here you see the trend there. And the boiling point of water is much, much higher than hydrogen sulfide. And uh, but starting, sulfur uh, is the second element in group 6A. But starting from the second element, third element, fourth element there, you can see the general trend and still hold. But because of the hydrogen bounding there, when those three molecules have much higher boiling point, and here again is that list there. And water H2O, 18 gram per mole, 100 degrees Celsius, a liquid at room temperature. Compared to the other elements combining with hydrogen atoms in the same group there, you end up with gas at room temperature, all the other three. And they have much, much lower boiling point. Okay, so these are the things that, and the reason behind that is the hydrogen bounding. And again, hydrogen bounding, you have to be, you have, when you look at the molecule there, you have to have at least one type of these, one of those three atoms there, in nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. And you also have to have at least one hydrogen attached to it. Now here's a question. Which of these forming atoms or molecules will have hydrogen bound? Well, methanol, that's the first one. You gotta write out the Lewis structure to show you the connectivity. Remember the condition. You have to have oxygen, you have to have nit or nitrogen or fluorine. You have to have at least one hydrogen attached to it. So for methanol there, this will be your blue structure. We have oxygen, we have one hydrogen attached to it. So this molecule will hydrogen down. Okay, and then methane. No oxygen. No nitrogen, no fluorine. For hydrogen, no. Hydrogen, um, hydrogen alone is not sufficient for forming hydrogen. No hydrogen bound. How about methylamine? Hydrogen bounding or not? Well, you gotta draw out the Lewis structure. Okay. Hydrogen bounding? Is there. Mm -hmm. You have at least one hydrogen there. Now, how about this one? 